listening to radio is a foreign country. Southeast Asia, the gong has been, and is even today, an object of great value, surrounded by obligations, prohibitions, and mystery. At the borders of Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, some 30 peoples who speak Austronesian and Austroasiatic languages are sharing a single religion, that of the spirits and they share the same musical heritage, playing gongs. Up to the end of the 60s, these people lived in the forest, practicing slash-and-burn agriculture and training elephants. Then, their home territory was turned into killing fields. In the war, the forest was severely damaged by American defoliants before undergoing a thoughtless exploitation that almost eradicated the forest completely. These events created upheaval in the culture of these peoples, who have, since then, turned to planting rice and coffee. But in spite of all that, they continue striking their gongs, the basic symbol of their cultural identity.
In the border zone of Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, the original function of the gong was to awaken, to invite and satisfy the yang, ever-present and all-knowing spirits that determine the destiny of everyone. Every element existing on Earth is associated with a yang in the beyond. Waters, mountains, trees, all inanimate things, including stairways in a house, and the mortar that crushes rice grains. Every village community, in fact, every individual also has his or her or its own protecting spirits. <laughs> Gongs always accompany major rituals and big festivities. Ceremonies for the yang, births, marriages, funerals, consecrations of a house, even family reunions. But the spirits that in the past would animate the gong players have changed because of all the economic, political, and religious upheaval that has taken place. Today, everybody embraces this music according to his belief or non-belief to communicate with the yang or simply to enjoy oneself.
Every array of gongs has its own structure. Some use only flat gongs, others only bossed, and still others are mixed. The number can vary from two to over twenty, but it's advisable to consider the entire ensemble as a single instrument, since it's true that the separate elements blend into each other. Gongs are designed to fit into each other, making storage and transport easier. In the ancient tradition, the size of each instrument was determined according to body measurements. Outstretched arms, elbow to fingertip, fist circumference, wrist, thumb to little finger, each unit of measurement was precisely indicated and named. You're listening to Radio is a Foreign Country.
Many peoples in this region live in societies of a matrilineal tendency. The women own the lands and all the material goods and they pass on their names to the children. Among the Lawe in Laos, a set of gongs reflects a family hierarchy. The biggest and also the most valuable is called mother. The second is father, and the smaller ones are, of course, children. These gongs are struck both for joyous occasions and funerals. Only the repertoire changes. But among other peoples, there are separate sets of gongs for differing occasions. There is a prescribed way of striking the gongs. Flat gongs are struck from inside with a branch of manioc. The bossed ones on the outside with a fist or with a drumstick.
The Lawe possess another grouping of gongs, whose use is probably unique in the world. They are struck only when rejoicing. Creating a melody using several gongs is more difficult than it may appear. It requires concentration and extreme hearing acuity. This faculty of hearing was in the past considered so important that people located the sight for intelligence in the ear. Today there are fewer occasions for striking the gongs. That's why these occasional musicians set to practicing as soon as their work in the fields is over. If one musician finds it difficult to play any note in the melody, he can change gongs. Tradition dictates that the musician changes his place, but the gongs remain in theirs.
In Vietnam, the 33 ethnic minorities represent only 13% of the total population. They're subjected to a vast assimilation program, schooling in the Vietnamese language, whole populations displaced, a mixing of ethnic groups, even turning cultures into folklore. Gongs are what remain as a symbol of cultural identity for the minorities of the high plateaus in the center of the country. Demonstrations, shows, organized by the authorities, furnish occasions to bring the gongs out of their cultural context and manage to break taboos. During this commemoration celebrating the liberation of the city of Kontum, delegations representing the various ethnic minorities of the region are invited to display their costumes, their dances, and their gongs. This music and these dances, originally of a religious nature, in this context become mere displays in the show window of the reigning power. Listening to radio is a foreign country.